right there where you are. I pray God's presence fills the place. Enjoy this service.
so hard to see it Took me so long to be leaving Then you to someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn me You get what we don't deserve
You are a child of the King, created unto good works. Hallelujah, fearfully and wonderfully made. Never forget who you are in Jesus. He's given you everything you need, everything you need. Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will keep you.
what we have going on this week. Tuesdays at noon, please tune in to KRGN 98.5 The Rock and listen to Making the Kingdom Visible, hosted by our very own Apostle. You can download the KRGN app or join her on Facebook Live. Here at Shiloh, we still believe that you can cast your cares on Jesus. You can now send your prayer request by text or email anytime. Our prayer partners will be there to present your request to God, the miracle worker. With God, all things are possible. We encourage you to take down the phone number and email. The phone number is 254-458-1916 and the email is shilohprayerline at gmail.com. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. We celebrate you. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We pray you receive all God has for you today and every day. We love you with the love of Jesus. There are multiple ways to stay connected with us. Our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, YouTube, and now Live Stream TV. Our services are also on demand on our YouTube channel. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. God loves a cheerful giver. Here at Shiloh Worship Center, we have three easy ways to give. You can visit our website and give by using PayPal. Also, if you have Cash App, you can give by using our handle, dollar sign Shiloh Worship Center. And of course, you're always welcome to come drop it off. Your generosity is helping us be a blessing to our community. Well, family, that's all I have for you today. Heaven's blessings. We love you with the love of Jesus. Have a blessed week. privilege to be with you and before we get started in the word let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you god for your grace for your mercy for your goodness this morning lord father we honor you even now god have your way in the midst of us oh lord move in your might in your power god move in your splendor god we thank you god because you are awesome and lord we know that there is no failure in you king jesus and we bless your name even now father bless your people god bless your word lord speak to us oh lord in the name of jesus empower us oh god father as we shift lord in you god as we move as we grow lord as we expand lord god as we take territory lord god continue to bless us lord continue to empower us oh god as we say thank you oh lord in jesus name amen and amen 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 what a blessing and amen <laughs> amen i'm excited to be with you today last week oh wow last week we dealt with um you know what is effectively a biotic dead thing my lord so we're taking it a step further this week this week we're going to be looking at the living among the dead oh my god they're living among the dead my lord amen and so we are in week four of the kingdom ecosystem wow powerful 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 let us go into the scriptures in the book of matthew chapter 13 verses 47 through 49 amen matthew 13 verse 47 through 49 and it reads again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net my lord that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind amen so the kingdom of heaven is like a net and you know everything is in the kingdom can i go ahead and say that this is revelation right here amen because we think that um dead things are not in the kingdom my lord oh boy but it says in everything um you know uh, it, it was um 
the, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, uh, which when it was full, they drew to the shore. So after the gathering, um, everything was drawn to the shore, it was drawn to the land, it was taken out of the water, amen, and sat down and gathered the good in uh, the good into the vessels but cast the bad away so there was good and there was bad gathered in the net oh my god that's the kingdom amen all right so the good and the bad was gathered but there was a sifting there was a sorting through uh, verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just my lord and, and and the point i really want to get here that there is um you know the, the living among the dead there is living things amongst things that are dead things that will be cast back my lord and the scripture actually says that it's the wicked things those things that are wicked wow powerful is that amen amen and so as we begin to look at this week amen the living among the dead um you know one of the things that the lord has really been dealing with me it's going to be imperative in this season it's going to be important in this season that as the body of christ we develop a prophetic mindset my lord um you know what does that actually mean what does a prophetic mindset actually mean um because for me you know um the season the era of um you know uh, prophecy or the flow of prophecy is a very challenging one uh, because there's been so many prophecies that has not been of the Lord. Amen. We, we put a God label on it, but it really has not been God uh, because it's been contrary. It hasn't been true. But in this season, listen, wherever the, um, there is a strategy for success, the enemy will bring in confusion. Amen. So we cannot shy away from a prophetic mindset because it is a kingdom strategy. My my Lord. Amen. And so, um, you know, a prophetic mindset is imperative, you know, to acquire the promises of God. We have got to be able to see and to perceive the things of the kingdom. You've got to be able to, to perceive it. You've got to be able to um, see it. You've got to be able to speak it, right? So that is a prophetic mindset. A perfect, uh, number two, a prophetic mindset is an ongoing realization that what you want and need from God already exists. Wow, how powerful is that? Amen. All right, we, we laying some foundation, right? Uh, before we go into uh, the depth of the living among the dead. So, you know, uh, a prophetic mindset is an ongoing realization of what you need from the Lord. Amen. What you want and what you need from God already exists in your kingdom account. My Lord, we're talking about the kingdom ecosystem. Uh, could, could it be that we're scrambling for some things that we already own? My God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're scrambling for some things that we already own. We believe the lies and the deception of the enemy that we, um, that you know, we are broke or uh, broke spiritually or broke emotionally or broke financially. Amen. But we already own it. It is in my kingdom account. And so now what I need to do is to be able to access my kingdom account, my Lord. I feel a stirring in my spirit. Amen. <laughs> um, and and, and all um, we need to do is withdraw from the supernatural and embody in the natural. So I must be able with a prophetic mindset now to withdraw what is already in the supernatural, my God, and embody it. That means I must embrace it, my Lord, um, in the natural. I must understand that it is waiting for its manifestation, just like the earth is groaning and waiting for the manifestation manifestations of the sons of God, what we already own is waiting for manifestation, my God. And so now uh, a prophetic mindset is going to be important. Number three, um, we have it, my Lord. Amen. We've got to understand that we have some things. Amen. Um, in Mark 11 verse 24, it says, therefore I say unto you, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you you shall have them. So the challenge now to the body of Christ is that we begin to pray, amen, and pray in faith, my Lord, knowing that we have received what we prayed for. Oh my God, hallelujah. So I hear God saying that there are some of us that is getting ready to step into what we have prayed for. 
my God. Amen. We're getting ready to step into what we have prayed for, my God. Number three, um, you believe, um, you know, or your belief or your faith is essential. You've got to understand that your belief or your faith is going to be essential in John chapter 14, verse 13. Amen. And it reads, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, that is exactly what God will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. God wants to perform his word that he will be glorified in his Son, Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. And, and, and the fact is that God wants to be glorified in us, my Lord. So he wants to perform his word. He wants to perform his word. The Almighty God is not um, double-minded he's not thinking should I should I not my lord he is ready waiting and willing to perform his own word my god amen uh, so you know in this season we have got to develop a prophetic mindset as we begin to look at the living among the dead amen because the reality is that really means that Christ wants us to have um, uh, his characteristics that's what God really wants amen in this season can I go ahead and say in this season in this season we need to amen move in the spirit of the apostles can I go ahead and just say what the that really means it means that we must be in a position where we are willing to turn the world upside down amen every um contradictory amen philosophy my god every contradictory belief that goes against the fact that jesus christ is lord that he still saves that he is a redeemer and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him my god that he will raise is the dead thing my lord amen that he is still moving that he is still god almighty that he changes not amen god wants us to move in that spirit where we will turn the world upside down amen in acts chapter 17 and, and verse 6 the apostles they were challenged amen they challenged a political system uh, and you know by preaching the gospel of jesus christ by preaching the truth of the word by preaching the good news oh my god the god still saves my god i'm excited about that all by myself amen 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 and so you know we've got to understand amen that christianity now needs to become um the nation standard again my lord and uh, can i go ahead and say some people may be saying that christianity is currently the standard um no it's not it's not amen the, the standard we've got to go back to the word of the almighty god amen that god came that a man may live my god he said that didn't come for the righteous so we're gonna get out of this righteous mindset amen that God doesn't love everybody that God only loves a certain group of people can I go ahead and remind you that he came hallelujah that sinners may be redeemed yes he did oh my god hallelujah Amen. So God needs us to, to walk in the spirit of the apostle where we will not be intimidated to turn the philosophies of the world upside down. My God. Amen. Amen. If everything was okay, then the Lord would have um, come already. Um, but there's still some things that need to be worked on. Amen. Amen. Number two, God wants us to move. Amen. In the spirit of Joseph. Amen. Uh, Joseph actually spoke into the atmosphere, the vision of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he positions his heart to walk upright in spite of the opposition, in spite of who uh, understood him, in spite of who um, agreed with him. My Lord, he, upright, he walked upright before man and God. My Lord, amen. And he served in whatever capacity the Lord required him to serve. My Lord, no matter um, where he was, he learned how to serve. He learned how to move with grace, with humility, with integrity, with love and 
and forgive us, Lord. And that's a message all by itself. We have got to be able to move with grace. We've got to be able to move with humility. We've got to be able to move with integrity, no matter what. Your integrity should not shift. Oh my God. Amen. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. You've got to be able to move with integrity. You've got to be able to move with love, with the love of God for all people, for all nations. My God. Amen. We've got to move with forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And Joseph had to move in those characteristics or otherwise he could not govern a nation. Oh my God. God is actually preparing us to govern. Can I go ahead and say God is preparing us to govern? We're talking about the living among the dead. Amen. Number three, we have got to move in the spirit of Nehemiah. We have got to have a mindset that we will rebuild the city. Lord, have mercy. We've got to reorganize people. Amen. We've got to reinstitute worship, my God. Amen. So we've got to understand that the walls uh, are broken down. The gates have been burnt. There's all kinds of stuff of coming into the city and, and, and we're called mingling with things that doesn't look like God the living among the dead. Hallelujah. We've given over our seed uh, 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 to, to the things that is not of the Lord, to heathens, my Lord. We've, uh, we've thrown our pearls before swines, my God. And so now God is actually asking us to redeem those things, my Lord, and to rebuild standards. That's what God is asking for, that we rebuild standards in the name of of Jesus. We cannot be intimidated to say that this is not God. Hallelujah. And you are not God and you cannot live in this city. Mm. And when you read the book of Nehemiah, the scripture said that um, the unbelievers were outside the gate and they were selling in the gateway. We will not buy anything that God, that does not look like God. No, you can't sell me that. Uh, I, I won't do that. I won't live like that. I won't talk like that. Amen. Uh, the that is God. And, and so we've got to reorganize ourselves. My Lord, can I go ahead and say that there is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism that God is actually requiring the church to reunify herself so we can advance and build the kingdom of God. My Lord, hallelujah. So we must reinstitute worship of the worship of the Almighty God, not, not the worship of me or the worship of you but the worship of Almighty God, not the worship of things that I think I need. I will not set anything above the worship of Almighty God. Oh my God. We've got to move. Number four, we've got to move in the spirit of Jonah. We've got to be able, amen, to bring a nation to repentance. Oh my God. So that means we first must know what is right and what is wrong, my Lord, and understand repentance and not tolerance. Oh my God, can I go ahead? Amen. Number five, we've got to have the spirit of Moses. We've got to deal with the king and with the nation, my Lord. Amen. We can't be afraid to go stand before somebody that you think is more eloquent than you. My God, you have got to be able to go boldly, knowing that the Almighty God has sent you and where you may feel inadequate, God has sent you divine help. My Lord, but the assignment concerning you has not changed. Number six, we've got to move in the spirit of Abraham. and We've got to deal with ourselves. We've got to deal with our family. Amen. To prepare to be the nation that God has called us to be. And we can't be afraid to move out, step out, Amen. Go forward and walk out. We can't be afraid of that, my Lord. Amen. And so the question becomes, amen, who are you? The living among the dead, who are you? Amen. And what is your assignment? You've got to ask yourself that. I'm asking myself that. Amen. <laughs> Can I go ahead and just say that the Almighty God um, will reveal portions of your assignment to you. And, 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 and you can't be afraid to advance in your assignment. And in fact, you can't even be afraid to move to another level in your assignment. Don't get stuck in what I was called to do yesterday if God is calling you to do something else today. Don't get stuck. I'm challenging you. Don't get stuck. Amen. 
and, 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 and so, you know, we've got to understand that we've got to come into a season where we must discern the times, the living among the dead. We must be able to discern the times. Oh, my God. Um, you know, we've got to be able to tell yourself who you are and you can't be afraid um, for people to call you who you are. Um, don't listen to the lies. You've got to know who you are. My God. And some people will say, why have you come to trouble us? So you got to understand that demonic forces will confront you if you are filled with the Holy Ghost on fire because the status quo doesn't want to change, my Lord. Amen. And you have got to be able to set the course, set the course. Amen. Set the path for where you're going. Don't be afraid, my Lord. Set the path for where you're going. Oh, my God. You are the living among the dead. <laughs> you are the living among the dead. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Oh my God. The scripture reads, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You have got to be able to know my Lord. Amen. Um, you know, the, the hope of his calling. Uh, once you know the hope of God's calling, the hope of the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will begin to understand the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints, my Lord. Amen. You will understand the riches of the glory of God that is in you, that you have inherited because of the hope of the Almighty God's calling. Amen. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord? What is God's power towards us? Oh my God. Amen. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. My God, we've got to believe that God is still working my Lord and he's working towards us and he's working in us and he is working through us oh my god the Holman's uh, Christian Bible, um, the, the Christian Standard Bible um, says it like this. It says, I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength. Oh my God, uh, can I go ahead and say we have got to get to know, amen, the almighty God in a deeper way, my Lord, because uh, God is starting to reveal himself, amen, with great power through the body of believers and that in itself is exciting. Oh my. Amen. Joshua 5 uh, verse 1 reads and it says, And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites which were on the side of Jordan westward and all the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over that their hearts melted. Listen, and sometimes God will put us in a hard place um, only because he wants to show his splendor to our enemies. Listen, um, you know, uh, the children of Israel was on the run um, from the Egyptians, but they didn't know how God will make a way. But you've got to still keep on going, even when you don't know that God will make a way. You've got to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And the scripture said they had um, the Amorites on one side and then they had, um, you know, the Canaanites on another. But um, they was able to survive by their previous testimony. <laughs> they're living among the dead amen and you know and and these people their hearts melted neither were their spirits in them anymore uh, because of the children of israel at that time the lord said unto joshua make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of israel the second time oh my god so sometimes you know we may feel we've gone through something but god has to take the knife out again because he's trying to do something with us. He's trying to take us somewhere. He's trying to cause our enemies, oh my God, to tremble because he's showing himself. He's showing who he is. Listen, God wants us to understand that we are the living. My Lord, Revelations 8 and Revelations 3, sorry, in 8, it reads, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door which no, uh, that 
no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Oh my God. Don't allow how you feel to determine your success. My Lord, amen. God said, I've set before you open door. And I, I, I believe God is speaking to somebody right now. God has set before you an open door. And I understand that it's taken everything in you to get to this point. But the Lord said, I know that you have a little strength. But in the midst of it all, you did not deny my name. My Lord, you didn't deny my name. You, you have been successful. You have endured the course. You are powerful, my Lord. Amen. God wants to use you. Don't let the strength that you feel, the little bit of strength, determine your assignment. My Lord, you've got to know who you are. You've got to know what is your assignment. My Lord, amen. You know, so you've got to understand, um, you know, even in its worst state, can I go ahead and tell you, even in our worst state, we will not die. <laughs> Amen. Oh my God, I was reading the scripture this morning. Amen. I was reading um, 2 Kings 13 and 20. Listen, um, you know, even in our worst state, my Lord, you will bring forth a life in the name of Jesus. So listen, the Lord began to tell me, he said, listen, when heaven and earth kisses, there will be life. My Lord, you are heaven. You are heaven. Heaven is living on the inside of you. Uh, 2 Kings um, uh, 13 verse 20 and 21, and Elijah died. The man of God had died and they buried him and uh, the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. Verse 21, and it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elijah. Even in your state where you think you are dead, can I go ahead and say there is a life on the inside of you. Oh my God. And there the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha. He revived and stood up on his feet. Feet. Uh, and the Lord began to um, speak to me and said, listen, um, when the man touched the bones of Elisha, Elisha means God of supplication. God is the God of supplication. And through you, God will supply and meet the needs of your community. He will supply and meet the needs of your family. And, you know, the Moabites was um, the uh, incestuous son of Lot. Um, you know, they were descendants and they meant father. I don't care um, who the enemy is you know it doesn't matter and um, God said that he has given you the upper hand in this season righteous believers and uh, righteous leaders righteous ministry you have the upper hand can I go ahead and speak to you you will not die in this season that which you have birthed will not die in this season amen the scripture that he touched his bones and um, bones means um, something that is strong um, something that is alive my God amen something Something that has strength so and um, we've got to understand that we're going to touch life in this season strength is coming for the believer can I go ahead strength is coming for the believer strength is coming for your feel the power of the Holy Ghost the scripture said that and um, once his bones touched the bones of Elisha then he was revived revived means that he um, that to live my God he was able to live amen he was nourished you're coming into your season where God is a about to nourish you. You're coming into your season where God is about to preserve you, where God is about to quicken you. Oh my God, somebody's been laying on their floor praying and crying, waiting for the quickening of the Spirit of God. Can I say that the quickening is on its way, my Lord? And revive means recovery. Recovery is coming to someone. Revive means repair. God is about to repair some things. Revive means to be whole. God is about about to make some things whole concerning you. Oh my God, the scripture said that when he touched the bones of Elijah, he was revived and he stood up. That means he, he came he, to a season where he was strengthened and he was accomplished. You're coming into your season where you will be accomplished. God will speak decrees over you. Oh my God, to stand up means decree. It means to endure. Oh my God, can I go ahead and, and encourage somebody? Uh, don't wait for someone to come and speak a decree over you. Can you go ahead and speak? 
speak over your own self. Decree the word of the Lord concerning you. The, the, whole, the, the, the Holy Ghost is in your mouth. The power of the Spirit of God is right on the inside of you. Hallelujah. When earth, my Lord, kisses heaven. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an earthen vessel, but I'm about to get into a place where I can connect with heaven. Uh, you know, I, the scripture says, yeah, I know you got a little strength, but come on, keep pushing, keep going, keep going ahead and touch heaven. It's right there. It's, you, you have access. It's right at the tip of your finger. Just push a little bit further. Oh my God. Hallelujah. We've got to understand what God is doing in this season. Amen. And, and God said, listen, upon the revelation, oh my God, that the church of God shall never die. The gates of hell cannot prevail. And you know, when you realize that you are the church of the living God, you're not the church by yourself. Amen. We are part of the body. Um, but once you get that revelation that the church of God will never die, you cannot die. I'm not talking about, um, you know, um, uh, uh, physically. I'm talking about, you know, spiritually. I'm talking uh, about your kingdom assignment. You will realize that the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. I don't care what counsel is going on down in the underworld concerning you. And when the season of your warfare is over, it is simply over and you shall redeem all that you have lost. You are the living among the dead. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I hear God saying, don't give up on yourself. Uh, arise. Come on, get up. Don't give up on yourself. Not in this season. You've come too far by faith. <laughs> You've come too far. You've come too far by faith. Amen. And Matthew 16 and 18 says, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon the revelation of who God is, and upon the revelation, amen, of who the church is, then the gates of hell cannot prevail. Um, we, in this season, we must invoke the presence of God, the living among the dead. You've got to invoke the presence of God at all times, amen. And so we can bind and declare We've got to involve the presence of God. Number one, we've got to understand um, that we've got to be able to change the atmosphere. My atmosphere uh, may be telling me that I cannot touch God, but I'm going to change that. I've got to be able to command, amen, the reign of God, the heaven, the things that are heaven. We must be able to follow the instruction of God. That means I must be able to set myself to hear so I can follow to reap a harvest. We're coming into a season of harvest. Number, two, number three, we've got to understand that. I'm coming into my season of refreshing. I may have uh, been winded in the last season, but this season I'm coming into refreshing. I'm coming into a season of revival and restoration, my Lord. And then you've got to understand that um, number four, you come into a season of revelation. God is about to speak and to download. Oh my God. Number five, you come into a season where um, God is releasing territory to you. God is releasing blessings to you. Amen. And then you're coming into a season, my Lord, of rest for your soul. Oh my God. God is about to give somebody some divine rest. Oh my goodness. If you can just fight in the season. Oh God. Amen. All that you need to position yourself um, to receive God is there. Everything that you need and to position yourself to receive God is, is right there with you. Everything you need is right there. Just open your eyes and take a look again. You know, Elijah had to tell his uh, had to tell his servant, go look again, go look again. I want to encourage somebody, go look again. You're not destitute, go look again. Uh, uh, you know, and you know, as God opens up the heavens over our life, he will do the impossible in our life. Amen. And that's what what he wants to do God wants to do the impossible that's that's what he wants oh my goodness God wants to do the impossible amen and, you know Romans 8 and 31 I love this scripture it said what shall we say to these things what shall we say to these things if God be for us who who can be against us you got to understand if God be for you my Lord come on community of God be for you come on Christian community of God be for you my Lord come on ministries of God be for you 
then you know who can be against you you've got to understand my lord psalms 102 verse 13 it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the set time to favor her yea the set time is come amen so this is the set time where god wants to favor his body of believers my lord this is a set time amen <laughs> amen this is this is a powerful time a powerful season in isaiah 59 verse 19 says so shall they fear the name of the lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him listen can i go ahead and just encourage you as we get ready to close that the spirit of the lord will lift up a standard can i go ahead and say that you are the standard the spirit of the lord is getting ready to lift you up my lord hallelujah in this season amen and you know uh, and and so we've got to understand that god is raising up a body of people in the midst of something dead Oh my God, living among the dead. Can I go ahead and just read one more scripture? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta read this one more scripture. Revelation 22 verse 2. It says, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was the, the tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielding her fruit every month and the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nation my lord and and can i go ahead and tell you that you're coming into your season where you will yield fruit for the healing of the nations and the lord began to speak to me said the nation uh, does not healing on the other side of eternity the nations need healing now we just gotta be planted in the right place my lord and we will be like that tree that will yield in no matter what the season is no matter what the season is um, you know the the scripture says that they um, that they they bear twelve manner of fruit and yield their fruit every month. Amen. So in the winter I'm yielding fruit, my Lord. In the in the um, spring I'm yielding fruit. In the summer I'm yielding fruit. In the fall I'm yielding fruit. That means I've matured enough to maneuver through the elements, through the challenges, my Lord, to be productive. My God, I'm speaking to you in the name of Jesus. You're coming into your season of great productivity do not let the elements do not let the challenges oh my god um, stop you from bearing oh my god this is your season i feel the holy ghost some of you are going to be bearing and, and birthing bearing and birthing amen in this season oh my goodness amen so be encouraged as we deal with the kingdom ecosystem amen the living among the dead the living among the dead oh my god amen and there is life and productivity of the living even in the midst of the dead wow god is doing something so powerful in this season Stay focused on the Lord. Stay focused on what he's doing in you, with you, and through you. I pray that you have been blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is your day. I celebrate with you. Amen. Heaven celebrates with you in the name of Jesus. We pray a special blessing over you. God bless you. We love you with the love of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We are so excited about what God is doing in this season. We invite you to join us in our new series, The Kingdom Ecosystem. Here is a short clip of what to expect. And so you have to realize now that what was hunting you, my God, what was pursuing you, I feel like running, what was pursuing you, you have the authority in the name of 
Jesus. Hallelujah. To be on the offensive, my Lord. We will not turn and run, but now we will pursue the enemy um, because we have the authority of the Holy Ghost. These principles will impact your life, your family, your church, and your community. The kingdom ecosystem. Stay connected. See you soon. God bless.